What's going on? Charles Botenston here, founder of BPI. We're going to be talking about comparables. So this is one of the areas that I have a lot of not only just knowledge on the topic, but I just have an, a, a lot of emotion on this. So here's an example. This is a perfect story to just just go into. So uh, I make sales calls every single morning. I reach out to for sale by owners and we have a for sale by owner that I was talking to and it's a beautiful bedroom, condo, high floor, everything else. And he said, you know, I'm not getting the traction that I want, the amount of people that are inquiring about it. All I'm getting is brokers and everything else. So I said, let me look into it. Let me see, you know, what else is sold in the building. Yes, it's a totally different marketplace, everything like that. Come back to him and I said, do you know that something literally three months ago, exact same layout, four floors lower, sold for $800,000 less, $800,000, almost a million dollars less than what you're listed at. Yeah, I understand, but my apartment is very unique and that is a perfect example of emotions instead of logic. That is a perfect example of actually looking subjectively instead of objectively at your apartment saying, a buyer's gonna come in, they have access to everything. A broker's gonna come in, they have access to everything. In other words, they have how much did it sell for? Were there any incentives? When did it close? How many days was, was it on the market? The one that closed for $800,000 less was on for almost three months on a, in a better marketplace. So in other words, not only do you have to go $800,000 less, you probably have to go another $100,000 or $200,000 less because it's a totally different marketplace. Doesn't want to hear it. So for me, it, it's not a, an exactable, it's a comparable. A comparable means comparable in size, in view, in buildings. Obviously one has doorman and the other one has amenities and, and this is a condo and that's 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 a co-op downtown. You know, you have to do apples to apples as much as you could do apples to apples. So let's get back into it. So comparable is just like I said. So it's it's like properties that are that sold, closed, and we'll get into that. So the first one is sold. That's the best one. Okay, so the, the way the, to reverse engineer comparables is say, what just sold? Because that is a buyer and that's a seller getting together and agreeing upon a price. If it's listed, that means that there's no buyer that has actually come along and said, I wanna pay this amount of money. That's what creates a marketplace. That's the marketplace, a buyer and a seller agreeing upon a price. When you just have a seller, I can list a studio at $25 million. That doesn't mean it's worth $25 million. But if I sell it at a certain price, that means it's worth that amount, okay? Yes, there's other things. Maybe the owner needed the money or it was a friend that they knew or they're selling it to the neighbor or whatever the case is. There's other circumstances, understandable, but the best one is what has sold and then how long ago did it sell? Did it sell last year, two years ago? Is it the same building? We'll talk about all that. The next best in contract, okay? So the easiest way is you call the broker and you say, hey, listen, you don't have to give me the exact price, but what's the, what's the percentage roughly that it was in contract? For me, whenever anyone asks that, I always give them, I say, here, this is, what it, this is what it went into contract for. Because I know it's, first of all, it's good karma. Second of all, I understand that we're already in contract. So it's not like a home that comes on in the building is gonna be our competition. We're already, we already have an agreed upon price. We already signed the contract. So it's, it's just a matter of putting together the purchase application and closing. In contract is the second best and obviously the one that's on the market that is the third best, but it's also, if you're listing a property, you have to understand that buyers are going, this is the best way to do. So when I talk to an owner and they want a really high price and I can't convince them on what's in contract and what has sold, I say, fantastic. Let's go out and check out those properties. Let's see what else is on the market because usually the owner says, well, this one's on the market. I'm like, yeah, that one's also overpriced. And then they say, well, this one, I have a bigger apartment or mine is better or my building is better or I have a better view or whatever the case is. I say, you know what? Fantastic. Let's go check it out. Let's go see it this Sunday at the open house. And then once they go in and they say, oh, you're right. Actually, mine is a little bit smaller or maybe the condition of this is a little bit better. And then they start seeing in person them as a buyer saying, okay, maybe mine is not as good and it's not convincing them they're wrong the thing is when you live in your home you feel it's better always at every time I've never had an owner say well I don't think mine's as good as that one well maybe like one to two percent moving on 
So you, comparables. So you have what's on the market, what's, what's sold, contract signed. Then you go to size and layout. Again, it is a comparable, not an exactable. Two bedroom, some of them are different layouts. It's, if it's in the same building, it's easier to compare because you're looking at, is it a split? You know, one bedroom on one side, the other bedroom on the other side. You have the living room. Are they side by side? Are they railroad? What's the view within the layout? Do you look at what floor is it on? You know, there's a, there's a ton of things that not only go into the layout, but it also goes into, is this gonna actually appraise for the value that we're going into contract at? Because what the appraiser is gonna look at, only what's sold, and they say, okay, this looks out at a water tower on a building. Uh, this one had direct views. This one had better finishes. This one does not, okay? So square footage, it's good, it's all right, but you should not use it as the Bible, okay? And the reason being is that I could have a 1,000 square foot home, two 1,000 square foot homes. One has a really long hallway, which is maybe 200 square feet, because you have 10 feet, and then you have 20 feet to actually get to the living room. I was in, I sold an apartment, it was 40 feet to get, 40 feet to get to the living room, okay? That's waste, you can't use that. You can't eat in your hallway. And then another one, you walk in, and then you have 1,000 square feet in front of you. Two totally different layouts, okay? So when you look at square footage, totally different. Property config configuration, building type. So this is just the easiest one that you could think about. If it's multifamily, is it single family? Is it a condo? Is it a co-op? Is there a retail below? Is it essentially a, a, not only a single, single family townhouse, but what street is it on? Is it a busy street? Is it not a busy street? Obviously, when it comes to, this is the rule that I have for condos versus co-ops, is that typically, typically, don't take it again as religion, which is, a condo is gonna go roughly for 30% more in value than a co-op. So in other words, you have you have side by side, and obviously yes, maintenance, everything else, which I'm gonna be talking about in a second. But if you have a, a comparable one bedroom and a comparable one bedroom, one's a condo, one's a co-op, one is gonna be roughly 30% more expensive. So it's really hard to actually compare a condo and co-op, okay? Condo to condo, definitely. And the reason being is that there's way more desirability to own a condo because renovations and everything else, I'm not gonna get into that. There's also less of them. It's easier buying in LLCs, investors, people overseas that are buying as well. They wanna park their cash here. So condos are always in high demand. Moving on, depends on the size of the building. Is it is is it a walk-up? Is it not a walk-up? Is there amenities or there not amenities? Coming older, pre-war, post-war. Is it uh, new construction, full service? Does it, does it have all the bells and whistles or is there no doorman is a part-time doorman is a virtual doorman you know obviously a pre-war co-op without a doorman cannot be compared to a luxury condominium this is all factoring into the price because when you say well my one bedroom is like this one bedroom there's a lot more neighborhood obviously it has to be in the same neighborhood you cannot compare the upper west side to the upper east side just like you can't even compare Hell's Kitchen with Upper West Side, it's a little bit more comparable, but people don't wanna live in Hell's Kitchen. They would rather live on the Upper West Side because smaller brownstones or just the unique neighborhood feel that they get finishes. There's so many flooring, cabinets, bathroom, kitchen. What's what's the actual fixtures? Also going into say electrical or plumbing, is there a washer dryer? And all the things that you just feel really good about when you walk into a home, you say, wow, the high ceilings actually feel a little bit better. And the last thing is the monthlies. So the monthlies, there's actually math behind this. So if you have a, a home that is typically, I think 5.6 years that people stay in an apartment, whatever you want to call it. A home, I call it a, a home instead of an apartment. But if someone actually moves into a home and their their maintenance is a thousand dollars more than the average maintenance for that size. So in other words, you have a, a two bedroom that their monthlies are twenty five hundred, and then you have another one that's fifteen hundred. You have to take that one thousand dollar difference, multiply it by five years, and that's roughly roughly the amount that you can get off of that. So in other words, it would be about sixty thousand dollars in savings between the two because you're spending that sixty thousand dollars per month as opposed to this. Yes, there's other factors because this might have uh, more amenities, or this is actually better at keeping their financials down. Whatever the case is, there is no golden rule. However, you have to factor in the maintenance, the common charges, and the taxes. And the last thing I'm gonna say is that financials and what do they do when there's a problem? So a problem is, you know, the elevator's broken or the lobby looks like crap or we need to upgrade the hallways. In, in other words, capital improvements, capital expenditures. Do they have the resources to actually spend cash or do they need an assessment? You have to look at that as well. If, if there's an ongoing assessment, that means they need to bolster their reserves or they have to pay 
for something because they don't have it. Yes, there's expensive things like roofs and, and like I said, hallways, lobbies, redoing that, or Local Law 11, which is redoing the outside of the facade, you know, repointing the brick. All of that is factored in. I said a lot, but if you really, truly want a good comparable instead of an exactable, bring in a an agent that knows what they're talking about because a lot of agents, I have it right here, a lot of agents, they buy the listing. So buying the listing means that they go in and they say, yeah, I'll put it on for a million dollars. And then they show it off that I just got a new listing. And then you're thinking, I'm gonna get a million dollars for my one bedroom. But meanwhile, the comparables actually say 900,000 or 875 and it's on the market for six months. And you go back to the broker every single weekend. What's the feedback? How is it going? Where are the showings? Where are my offers? And then the, the agent goes, well, it's, it's kind of busy. We have like one or two people coming by and it's, 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 it's actually really, no. The guy bought the listing. In other words, the owner thought it was this price. The broker agreed with them without actually doing the research and it really should be here. So what does that mean? It means it sits on the market. It means that the expectations are not aligned. It means that they don't believe in the process. This is so important, comparables. You have to go on with, and by the way, this is the last thing I'll say, is that it is an arbitrary number that two people, in other words, the, the listing broker and the seller agree upon. That's it. They agree upon an arbitrary number. It's not set in stone. It could go below the asking price. It could go at the asking price. It could go above the asking price. But you have to, as a buyer's agent, understand you're bringing your client in, you wanna get the lowest price. But also, if you're representing the seller or if you are the seller, you have to look and say, well, actually, is my home actually worth this? It's been sitting for four months. My broker said that, no. Go back, revisit the comparables every three months, every two months, every one month. I say 18 days and say, that's enough for two open houses, enough to get the feedback, and then you adjust from there. It may not even be the price, but there has to be some adjustment after three months, two months. It's a different amount of competition that anyone has experienced in probably eight or nine years. Hope this helps a little bit. I don't know the marketplace that you're in, but comparables are the objective way to go. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. As always, Charles at Botanston.com. Have an amazing day. Talk to you soon.